here, but Dave Dickerson's crew knows the opportunity in front of it, and the special moment it is to play in this iconic venue. Leslie Jones, Lee Cassell, and in the middle, Helen Milliner, our officials for the night. Kyle Filipowski, Filipowski, one of the top 10 rated freshmen, was in the center there. Knocks out of bounds off of a Spartan. It'll be Blue Devils ball to start things off. Filipowski, double-double in his first game on Monday. One of the fourth Duke player to ever debut with a double-double. Loaded with skill, shot-making ability, and for a big, he can really pass the ball high-low. USC Upstate had a really spirited practice yesterday. A lot of energy in their practice. They're coming to win this game. They're coming off a win against Brevard at D3 school in North Carolina. Beat them by over 40, and there's Jalen Ganey getting a steal and loses his footing, but lays it in anyway. That's your Jordan Ganey, excuse me. That is your reigning Big South freshman of the year. Second team all Big South last year, preseason first team player. And Showing activity again on the ball. And Dave Dickerson preached, pressure the ball, be in the gaps, block out. Roach tries to split it, second straight turnover. Trey Broadnax, the transfer from Navy, lays it up. Great start for Spartans. You see the ball pressure by USC Upstate. They're not going to be afraid in this game. They understand the game is one on the court. It's not one upstairs with the banners. The banners, the crowd, or the recruiting rankings. Number one class in the nation here, and Filipowski part of that on the ball. This floater over Kadarius Smith, but it doesn't go in. And there's the block out. They have to finish plays. Dave Dickerson said, eliminate the live ball turnovers, clean up the defensive glass, and we got a chance. Ganey guarded by Tyrese Proctor, another one of those freshmen. He reclassified from 2023 class to 2022 in the summer. Missed some time with the injury. He's got his arm hooking Ganey, and that's an easy foul call for Lee Cassell. Take a look at the deep ball. And they're pressuring the ball, and then they're anticipating on the passing lanes. That was a telegraph pass. What a finish by Ganey, falling down. The push. This time it's an easy two. How important is the start in this venue when you're upstate? It's huge because you try to take the crowd out of it. You're never going to take this crowd out of the game, but you can keep them quiet if you can score with pace. Played here two times, once at Boston College, once at Ohio State. Took two L's. It's a tough place to play. This is my first ever broadcasting foray as that three goes in. Can't, can't lose up here. <laughs> no, well, my, my team did. The Columbia Lions lost by about 100 that night. But it was fun to watch. Defense Roach wide open, doesn't knock it down. Ryan Young, the grad transfer from Northwestern. Offensive board, Filipowski. No good. And foul called on the floor, though. And Floyd rebound. John Shire spoke to us today at shoot-around about the unselfishness of this team. They had 19 assists on 27 field goals against Jacksonville. We saw the kick out to the wing, the one more to the corner. This team looks for each other. A lot of contact inside, no call. Looks like Broadnax just put, pushed Filipowski in the back. Going the other way, trying to finish over some contact to Mir Langway. Coach drops it off to Young. Lit on that basket for the Blue Devils, but they'll maintain possession. And Dave Dickerson patrolling the sidelines for USC Upstate his fifth year. He knows this building well. Played at Maryland, was the captain of the team in 89, and went to two different tournaments. And then he coached at Maryland in their heyday. He was part of that national championship team under Gary Williams. Recruited the likes of Steve Francis, Steve Blake, Juan Dixon, all those guys. So he knows this place very, very well. He's at Ohio State, made a Final Four. Very accomplished coach. And when he took this job over, they won one game in the Big South. Last year, they won 10. He has done an amazing job at USC Upstate. A teacher, a coach, and a motivator. And I'm telling you, that practice was super competitive last night. I was afraid somebody was going to get hurt. They already have enough injuries. True. But guys were really defending each other and calling each other out. Kellen Milliner and uh, Lee Cassell trying to set out, sort out a timing issue here. And the USC upstate injuries we just touched on are really critical. You've got three guys that would be playing, probably starting out of the lineup. is integral to this team. I and mean, you're trying to come on the road. He talked about how big their depth is and to not have 
Alves, Goodlow, and Brazil, which is 24% of the scoring. And as I mentioned, three starters. It's a big, big hit, but they're 7-0 to start. Brazil was the backup point guard last year. Goodlow will be back in December. Great glue guy. Seven points a game last year. Smith diving on a loose ball, looking for help. Actually gets it out to Langley. Trying to work on young kicks. Smith. Oh, got to go. That's not his game, but he's capable. Kadarius Smith. He made the first one. Sometimes can be the most dangerous thing. And that's a big push off on Jacob Grandison just checking in the game. The grad transfer from Illinois. Travel, excuse me. What does he bring to this team? A glue guy, a guy who can bang inside, guy who can score. But I'm looking at the intensity right now, and John Shire said, I'm looking for intensity and our team to play hard all the time and be unselfish. It's really that simple. Right now, USC Upstate, they may have a lead right now in the intensity category. Definitely. by Jeremy Roach. Good cut by Smith out of the corner. Roach head up. Under the ball screen. That could be a problem. And it is. It's a big part of his game that he improved from a year ago, Jeremy Roach. He has to score and facilitate for this team and defend the ball. 11 new faces for this Duke team. Seven freshmen, four transfers. Roach, the one key returner, and his game really has continued to progress. And now they're going to call Smith, I believe, for a push off underneath on the rebound. They do. We're going to go to break. When we come back, we'll talk about the rest of that freshman class, rated number one in the nation. Position with Mitchell and Whitehead. And I love the shot blocking ability by Lively, Filipowski, and Mark Mitchell. And Jaden Shute can shoot the ball really well from the outside. He hasn't done it yet in the preseason or in the first game, but expect him to make shots from the outside. Jalen Blakes just checks in the game for Tyrese Proctor, as does Derek Lively, number one. His first appearance in a Duke Blue Devil uniform on the baseline there, wearing number one. Mitchell to the 10, right down the lane line out of a timeout. Good finish from the freshman. He just brings the fight. Some people call it motor. I see a high competitive spirit, Mark Mitchell. You know, his nickname is easy, but there's nothing easy about playing against Mark Mitchell. Blake's defending Broadnax. Broadnax has to, yet to get rid of the ball. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Finally does. Smith on it. Spinning on Grandison. Southpaw. No good. Mitchell with the rebound. He's looking to go. And there's, the, there's the versatility. He can grab and go. Off the glass. He'll set screens. Baseline driver. An opportunistic, high-energy player. 25 in the white. I thought that was interesting. We talked to John Shire earlier today. He said, how do you want to be different than your team with Coach Case? Not really, but in offense, we want to play faster. Not necessarily shoot it faster, but play faster and have these guys always feel free was something he wanted to emphasize. Right now, they got to escape the pressure. Oh, great First points for Derek Lively and a great dime by Roach. Lively 7-1. Excellent screener, a hard dive guy to the basket. Weak side's got to pick him up, but that's a catch and an easy finish for Derek Lively. How about the enormous size that Duke has? Well, Lively at 7-1, Filipowski 6-10. Screen and roll, no help from Kadarius Smith. Great way to get Derek Lively off. I mentioned the size. The starting lineup, now this is a different group. Lively eventually will be in that lineup. They would be the eighth tallest team in the NBA <laughs> with their starting lineup. And that's where they're really different this year than years past. I mean, they have elite shot blocking presence. They should win most games on the glass. And both of those guys, Lively and Filipowski, and Young can score inside. Mm -hmm. and we talk so much about the freshmen, and they're outstanding when it comes to talent and physical measurables, but it's Ryan Young that he's the anchor of this team in the paint. Young, the transfer from... Northwestern taking a blow right now, number 15 on the bench. Great footwork, good use of both hands. The finisher on the rim, knocked down a shot. Six for six in that opener. And I talked to Derek Lively last night. He said, Ryan Young teaches me a lot in practice. It's good for the, for the freshman to learn. 
it is a learning process. I think people understand it is a baptism by fire at any level. When you come in from high school to college, it is a huge jump. Rankings do not matter once you step on the court. The physicality and the speed of the game, as well as the basketball IQ, is all next level. And these guys are learning day by day. Blake's has been good on the ball, and Broadnax has come in. Up the pressure on the ball defensively. That's what John Shire did want to see. Make them feel us all game. Didn't start that way. Looks it now. And Mitchell in the passing lane. You know, Duke's defense has been okay in this game, but it's their offense. They're, they're not moving the ball as quick as they did in the first game. Screens aren't hard enough against Upstate. You may have to just put the ball in the deck and try to go by these guys. But you got a screen and cut with precision. Stagnant right now to that point. A lot of dribble by Blakes. Gets it to Mitchell. It's spaced out. Good block. Great right block. Njai. Sine Njai with the block. Oh, better block the other way. And Blakes is out and running. So is Lively. Incoming. wants a timeout. He knows what this building's all about, and it is starting to rock. We're going to break, and he settled him down, settled his team down. Duke up for the first time this game. Back here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Great sequence here, Paul. Cindy Injai with the big-time block. USC Upstate pushes it hard, and Jalen Blakes. Two big-time blocks. 6-2 sophomore. Blakes has been great defensively early in this game, and that ball punctuated it. you got to love the response by Duke because Ninjai makes a momentum-changing play, and Duke fights right back. Duke came in down seven. Quick 7-0 spurt by the Spartans. Rebounded with a 9-0 run. Smith back in the game. Can't handle it. The end falls down, turns it over. Mitchell on the run. Grandison, that's what he does well. 40% of his career in the moment. And that one... Simple catch and shoot from the penetration of Mark Mitchell. Duke starting to extend in full court man. A little bit of zone look right there. Hands on the ball, gets a steal. Coast to coast. You know John Shire had something to say at that mm -hmm. first TV timeout when his team was down. No doubt about it. They looked uh, a little lethargic to start. Not anymore. Well, they looked a little tentative on offense. Their defense was okay, but their turnovers and their shot selection wasn't quite right. Blaze gets caught on the screen. Broadnax switches hands. Nicely finished. The finger roll. That time, their defense had a big breakdown. Nobody with the hedge. Nobody with the help. Mitchell can't get it to go. They like Mitchell right at the nail at the foul line for some isolation. Duke starting to rev it up right now. Penetration and kick by Mitchell. That gets the three ball going. Raking for steals. Jalen Blakes, coast to coast. It's a new staff he's putting together. Chris Carwell, Neil Jefferson there in the past, but they move up a seat. Jay, Jay Lucas comes over from Kentucky. These dudes could all hoop. Not just then. <laughs> not just then. Right now, dude, there's not a single staff that could beat those guys. And you could, I, I could go play, and they'd still win. We win five on five. Who's your first pick for lunchtime ball? Oh, man. I, we were watching Jefferson today. He still, he still looks really good, and he's the youngest of the crew. And I'm going to take John Shire. You know why? why? Because you always let the head coach score in lunchtime pickup. <laughs> That's probably true. That's how you don't get fired. I'm saying, I'd probably undercut him. That's probably, I'd, be, I'd be canned within weeks. Turned over by Duke, but his team, his, his staff is new, the team is new. But he wants to put his, his stamp, he's been here for nine years. He's part of a championship team in 2010 as a player. And the captain, 15, was on the bench. But now trying to, to take it from the Hall of Famer and put his, his stamp on it. He's got Mike Schroggy as well on the staff in a support role, former head coach at Elon. Chris Carrowell, the veteran of the staff. Yeah. He gives John Shire a lot of 
you know, what he needs. You know, John has no, no yes men on his staff. All guys that are trying to help the team and help him. Which is huge. Ball reversed. Shot clock counting down. The evening crowd got him. Unfortunately, for Redow, Rido, excuse me. He had about three seconds left and just chucked it. Ryan Young back in the game trying to set the screen for Blakes. Reverse to Tyrese Proctor. Proctor still looking for his first points, but nice pass and an extra pass. A couple former Big Ten guys hooking up. See, veterans know where to go, and they know what to do when they touch the basketball. They play fast, they play intense, but they slow down in their mind. And that's the difference between a freshman and a senior. People always say that the game slows down. It's hard to explain, but it, it, the pieces are moving at a different pace as you get older. Big time shot. By Ganey, and that's a guy that can really shoot. It shot at 49% last year. And take a look at this, Paul. Like this, the numbers, look at the quality. He's a freshman. Against D1 opponents, he shot just over 49%. The class of guys, only two other guys in the last 20 years have shot at a higher percentage. Steve Novak and Marcus Howard. As true freshmen. As true freshmen. Those we dudes were drillers, man. Uh, check out the drop line, though. Yo, I wasn't supposed to be a shooter in my how freshman did, year. How did that get on there? Can somebody put my sophomore or junior year's numbers up hey, there? sophomore year, I researched. 40%. Thank you. You were from three, my friend. They tried to make me a point guard. Don't convert shooting guards, at least if they're not any good. You said you'd like to have fun before the broadcast. I do. Well done. You had me completely surprised. No wonder you're excited about getting that, that graphic in. Well done, sir. Well done. Will Black, producer. There will be no beverages by Freddie Post game. I'll take care of you, Will. Good stuff. We'll file for uh, uh, Duke, and now Redow will take it out. Proctor picks up his second, so he checks out for Blakes. He had a rough first game, Proctor against Jacksonville. He didn't score, missed some shots, which is okay. He missed a layup that was uncontested. Looked like nerves to me, but that young man has great instincts, and he is a shot maker and a passer, a 6'5 guard from Australia. A really talented player, really smooth, but you could see him thinking and, and just, you know, that when you think as a player, that's, a, that's not good. And see, there's great communication right there. Emil Jefferson mm -hmm. and Proctor. Emil not far removed from the game and can give his players the insight and the encouragement that you need especially in those first couple of games in your first year yep. Roach defended by Ganey upstate down five started with a 7-0 run to start the game and then Duke countered 9-7 Filipowski up through some contact can't get the end one baseline double came a little late Young and Filipowski were terrific against Jacksonville. Whether it was against zone or man, little cross screen action to get Filipowski inside. You got Mark Mitchell, you see him 25 in the white. Three man, four man, whatever you want, man. Because <laughs> that's the way he plays. This team has great size. So about Tuesday night, we got a men's hoops doubleheader for you right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Louisville. Not a good start for Kenny Payne and crew. Lost to Bellarmine in their opener. They're playing tomorrow. But App State, 6 Eastern on Tuesday. Then Armando Baycott, the number one North Carolina host, Gardner Webb at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill. North Carolina about to tip off shortly against Charleston just down the road here. North Carolina with a terrific three man class. I really like Seth Trimble. Point guard. Throws it up to Mitchell. Showtime. It's not just the steal or the deflection, it's the conversion. They move so quickly from defense to offense. Ganey. Oh, guarded by Mitchell. A lot of length on him. He down, no good. Oh, spins past the pressure, and now he's in the run. Big key for Upstate as well. Defensive transition. Make this a five-on-five five game. Young went down. Slow to get up. Still grimacing. Shot clock down to 10. High ball screen coming for Roach. Refuses. Lane line. Help late. Yeah. Dave 
Dickerson will take another one. We're going to step away as the Blue Devils are taking control of this one from Cameron. Duke up 22-11 over USC Upstate after starting the game down 7-0. And defensively, Paul Biancardi, that's where they started to turn the screws here in this one. They started to get serious about defense mm -hmm. after the first four minutes. They're, they're living low in their stance. They're playing low. And they're staying low. When you do that, and your hands are active and your feet are moving, you get deflections, you get steals, you get ball pressure, and you can speed up your opponent. The defense is a big part of this league for Duke. 12 points off turnovers now. More than half the points for the Blue Devils. Justin Bailey on the ball. Turned by Jeremy Roach. You see the great spacing by USC Upstate. Too high, too wide, and one inside. Constant movement. Smith, the lefty. Again. Maybe they got him again, the crowd. Don't listen to him. These are said and done. Somebody stopped the ball. Blocked by Young, the three by Roach. That was a walk-up three. That's the stuff that'll drive Dave Dickerson crazy. You, you got to communicate and stop the ball. He's maybe the best player in the ACC. And getting blocked is almost like a live ball turnover. Great run by Ryan Young, good find by Roach, and the basket will count, and the foul. Big time block, that gets Derek Lively his first two career points as a Duke Blue Devil. What the strip by Blakes. Just being in the gap, being alert, being active. High hands, they follow the ball. And this Duke team can really convert from defense to offense. 12 points off turnovers right now. Jalen Blakes, when he inserted in this game too, helped turn things around, started picking up full court. And this is the story, the story of the game is told right here in the turnover. And he knows his role. Yep. You know, make open shots. He did against Jacksonville. Guard the ball, help. He does the dirty work for Duke. I love that. Hey, look at his body. So strong. Yeah, strong. Physical. 6'2", 200. It reminds me of Jordan Goldwire. Oh, In, in cool. many ways that Duke had. You know, just a guy who just kept getting better and better through practice. Goldwire, one of the best on-ball defenders in the yes. country. Yes. Lively coming over for the block. Doesn't get it. the drive and turn him into a shooter mm -hmm. he can make them every now and then but that's not his game when you get up on mark mitchell he's going to blow by you Hand straight up, no foul, gets the block. You don't always have to leave your feet to get the block. Especially on a 9-2 standing reach. That helps. 7-8 wingspan, put those two together. Blakes. Come on, you're from Columbia. I can't hardly add. I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> Lively, one of the best shot blockers among all freshmen this year. Good hedge by Filipowski, turnover. Scurried off the court just in time because the big freshman is coming to get an and one. Great defense by Filipowski. When I say great, because he gets out, a little flat help. He sticks his hand in there and then he takes it coast to coast. How about the mobility and the coordination at 6'10 to go the length of the floor, get the steal, and finish the play? You mentioned his his skill set, his ability. Guy comes from a pipeline, a family of phenomenal athletes, phenomenal players. As he strokes down this shot. I and mean, take a look at what, what his family's accomplished. Back to his aunt and his father and his brother. His brother's now playing at Harvard, twin brother. He's got his uncle, who you know from BC, aunt at Dartmouth. I mean, look at this. His uncle, Randy Haggerton, was a seven-footer. I keep calling Filipowski 6'10". He's seven feet. Let me get that one right. How about his dad? Slippery Rock, baby. I went to my first basketball camp. <laughs> Go for skill. That's Sean, right. John, that's Miller, right. John Miller's dad, Sean, John Miller, the dad of Sean Ritchie, man, used to 
be the best coach in the history really, of high school basketball in Western Pennsylvania. And his brother Matt is a really good inside player as well. Had a chance to watch him for the New York Rens when they played together on the AAU circuit. He'll be playing for a former Dukey, Tommy Amaker, up at Harvard. One of the best programs in the Ivy League. And just look at Lively as a 7-1 player and Filipowski, a 7-footer. They both can make outside shots. They both can pass from the high post. Filipowski better in the low post than Lively. They were the one and two ranked centers by you in the ESPN 100. Is there any hesitation by guys to follow the, the one and two? To go to the same place, to play the same position in the same way. They're all concerned by that? Because they can play together. Most guys can play together. I just think the teams that are recruiting the other guy tell them, hey, you know what, you can't go there. Yeah. They already got somebody like you. Right? Guess what, you can play two point guards together. You can play two centers together as long as they can both face up, or one of them can face up. In this case, both can face up. It's a little late in the reach, and Smith tried to drop it off, no good. Another turnover. And what most people don't know about Derek Lively and Kyle Filipowski, outstanding passers. So they could do it from the high post, or down inside, you can throw it in, send cutters, they can skip it weak side. Roach parted by Ganey. Freshman of the year last year in the Big South. This is the goes out of play. Quick break in the action. Tell you about week 11 in the ACC Network College football lineup. Fresh off there. We'll call it an upset, not by the boys in Vegas. Syracuse <laughs> took was taken down by Pitt. They square off against Puerto Rico, Brennan Armstrong of Virginia. UVA needs to win out to become bowl eligible. That's noon Eastern start today. Then true freshman quarterback MJ Morris leads number 16 NC State against Boston College. And the day capped off by our ACC and primetime matchup. Syracuse trying to turn those things around against Florida State, number 23 now in the CFP, who won two straight, including a dismantling of Miami last week. NC State has a really good football coach and a great football team. I saw them destroy UConn early this year. I'm, I'm torn in that game because my daughter goes to NC State. Okay. My wife and I met at Boston College. Okay. So it's, it's a pick em. It's a pick em. All right. Well, U UConn has been torn apart by everybody in the SEC this year, but that's a different discussion. Deflected. Kept in, though, by Broadnax. Kind of the shot clock. Nice hedge by Filipowski. Kick, corner three for Bailey. They needed it, they didn't get it. You see Filipowski, he hedges and gets back. Big difference. Good run by Filipowski, good hands to corral it eventually. Nice pass. Watch the court vision by Jeremy Roach. Penetration on the baseline. I see my brother on the wing, Jalen Blakes. Triple. Bulls are up by 20. Camera Crazy's doing their thing. Almost 500 straight sellouts in this building. Back to 19, since 1990. They've sold out Cameron, longest streak in the country. He was here for two of those sellouts. One in 1991 and one in 2001. Unfortunately, the results were the same for us. Double L. Double L. But the first one was real bad. Malcolm Huckabee was a freshman, our colleague. Yeah. We had Billy Curley, Howard Isley, but they had Grant Hill and Christian Leitner, and the game was over before it started. <laughs> Roach kicks it out. He's got five assists on the night. Make it six. John Shire said he wants Jeremy Roach to assist and play make more, and you see it there. When the ball moves, the scoreboard changes. Mm -hmm. going to take out the other team's best player. That is Ganey on the ball. He drops it off. Nice block by Young. They're hard hedging Ganey on ball screens. It eliminates his shot. A lot of contact. No call. Anderson can't get it to go back to back possessions. Contact there. Anderson still behind the play. Bailey's three no good. Uh-oh. Next, trying to take the charge there. Watch this defense by Duke on the ball screen. Jordan Ganey with the ball. Okay, you can't allow him to shoot. He's 49% from three, so what do they do? Quick hedge. How about Young with the quick hedge and then the recovery back to Ninja. The ability to do two things in one possession. 
That's what bigs have to do at this level and the next level. Multiple efforts, understanding where you're supposed to be. Grad transfer from Northwestern, of course, played for Chris Collins, another Dukey up there. Never been to the NCAA tournament, though. He's hungry to make that happen, and he comes to the right place for that. Duke number seven in the country. I don't know if they're quite seven right now, but I see them as somewhere between 10 and 15 when the dust settles. So they got Kansas coming up on Tuesday, Champions Classic. Huge game, of course, the appetizer of that one on ESPN is Kentucky and Michigan State. Michigan State playing on an aircraft carrier right now. Kick out for three for Roach, no good. It is Veterans Day, another great event. Michigan State, Gonzaga playing on the aircraft carrier out in San Diego. Thank you to all our veterans out there. Enjoy this day, should be recognized more often, no doubt about it. Last time Duke actually played on Veterans Day, they beat Army in 2018, ironically enough. Coach K's alma mater. Upstate another time now. We'll hold it here as Duke leads by 23. They are harassing Jordan Ganey, whose father is Justin Ganey, the assistant coach at Tennessee. Justin was a very good player at NC State, but Jordan Ganey is getting all types of attention. In ball screens and off ball screens, he's seeing help on the wings. His man is getting up into his grill, as we like to say. There's nowhere for him to go with the basketball. He's got to give it up and trust that it will come back. USC Upstate try to run some actions to get him the ball, and if they don't allow you to run offense, Duke, then you have to go to your backdoor counters. And Ganey was... Along with a terrific guard. DJ Burns started at Tennessee as the player of the year at Winthrop in the Big South, and now he's back in the now he's back at the high majors at NC State. And you can see Hill coming up after us. He's at Georgia now. They're playing at Wake Forest here, 8:30 on ACC Network as Blake's comes the other way. I guess guys get a taste of uh, success and they want to challenge themselves and try to add another level. Your role changes when you transfer. You've got to keep that in mind. Very rarely do you remain the guy. Reversed by Broadnax, no good. Nice move, though, by Broadnax. And now one of their last 11 Spartans are. They started this game 7-0, so it is a 39-9 run. To do that math, folks, that was difficult for me. I think I'm right. Good step through. Can't get it to go, though. It's hard to see the rim against Duke. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the 10. Through Njai. The rebound by Filipowski. He's fouled. Sometimes when you get really deep against Duke, you may have to spray it out as opposed to trying to finish at the rim. Now four for four from the free throw line. Tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time, the ACC Huddle Crew coming to you live from Syracuse, New York. Get you set for another full day of football. We also have halftime shows, pre- and post-game shows throughout the day. 6.30, get a complete wrap-up of the afternoon's games, and they'll get you set for the primetime matchup between FSU and Syracuse on ACC at 8 o'clock Eastern, all right here on the network and the ESPN app. Upstate has not scored since the 7-14 mark. That's a good stretch for the Duke defense. See if they can get a backdoor play because Duke has overplayed. And Jai working on Young. Oh, right to the hands of Grandison. He'll go the other way. Their 20th points off turnover points off of turnovers. Upstate come out super aggressive to start this game, and they were terrific for the first four or five minutes. They've looked tentative since Duke has decided to throw the knockout punch early. Uh, next, working on Young, getting down the lane line, finishes, and John Shire will call timeout. 
to use it or lose it. Will war with his team. High ball screen for Upstate. That allows Broadnecks to kind of snake the screen, twist it, come off, get downhill. His dad was an excellent player at Georgetown. Harold Broadnecks. Son transferred from Navy to USC Upstate. something you remember doing would you want to work on like full full court type plays absolutely even if other people see them and scout them you want to get your guys in a rhythm and a habit of executing your plays now you're not going to use something that you're going to do at the end of a game but something that maybe your b package take a look at and see if guys can execute what you draw up and jai on the ball with that wingspan young to inbound off of grandison's foot it looked like from here Buzzer goes off, but hold on a second. It did seem like there was going to be time left on the clock. And they will go to the board, and Lee Cassell will view this. It seemed like a quick Very quick 2.1 second. There's going to be some time left, I imagine. And that, that could be a potential turnover, but look, look at John Shire in the huddle. Just more instructional than critical. Mm -hmm. Sometimes coaches, especially first-time coaches, yeah. and I had that experience, you can lose your mind in the huddle <laughs> and in the locker room. And, and right there, John just kind of instructing his team on maybe what they could do better when they run that play next time. I had a first-time coach experience. Love him to death. But yeah, he lost his mind quite a bit in those first couple years. You want to give us names? People can research and figure it out. <laughs> I love that guy. We'll let it go. He's still in the game. Doing very well in his current spot. Duke gets it back. There we go. 1.9. Roach, pull up. And that's how it'll end. 25-point deficit for USC Upstate. They started up 7 0, the Spartans did, but it's been all Duke since then. We'll send you to the ACC Network Studio. Kelsey Riggs, Luke Hancock. Take a look around the conference. We'll be back in a bit. 22. It felt like 80. And that's what Duke wants to do defensively. They want to pressure the ball. Get into the passing lanes, but John Shire said today at shoot around, we're not going to extend as much as we have in the past, but in the quarter court, we're going we're to make you cut hard and backdoor us because we're going to take your actions away. I thought that was interesting, too, because that's what Duke a lot of times was known for, that pressure D denying one pass away. But we saw it last year at times, Miami, Virginia spread them out and just drive them. And he's trying to maybe change that philosophy just a little bit. He doesn't want to extend as much, but in that quarter court, he will deny. And he'll play gap too, but sometimes you'll see them play on top of cutters and make those cutters go back to it. Tyrese Proctor back in the game, the only player in the first half that did not score. He's yet to score this freshman at two fouls in the first five minutes and 40 seconds. He hit the pine. There's another freshman, Filipowski, can't get it to go down. Broadnax head up, looking for Rido. Inside the long lane. Just a brick wall, Ryan Young. He just, he takes up so much real estate on both ends of the floor. It's like hitting a brick wall. You can't move him. Excellent. Smooth. When that jumper goes down for Mark Mitchell, it's good news for Duke. It gives them another weapon from the outside until Derek Whitehead gets back. Mitchell two for five, and the opener from three. Knocks this one down first of this game. You see Duke switching now some of these screens. Switch to deny. That's why they're getting steals. Ball lost out of the hands of Ganey. Reigning Big South freshman of the year. Having a tough day against this Duke team. Well, Duke has taken his three-point looks away. Mm -hmm. He's taken one three. He's made it. But for a guy who shoots 49%, and Dave Dickerson is trying to get him shots both with the ball and coming off screens, uh, Duke has just suffocated gaining in this game. That's a number that I think people always look at, like, what is their three-point field goal percentage defense? It's misleading. The best, the best number, I think, to your point earlier, is when you limit their attempts. It's three-point field goal attempts to two-point attempts. If that number's small, then you run them up the line. That's what you really want to do. And that's the best way to guard the three-point shot is don't allow it. Young on the duck in. Spins to his right. Old man game. He's got big hips. He's got great footwork. 
secure hands, and he knows where he wants to go with his back to the basket. And that takes time as a young post player. But Young now, as a graduate transfer, knows where he is on the court. He's what? going to be killing people 20 years from now to YMCA somewhere. And a lot of props to Chris Collins, who worked with him and his staff at Northwestern. Bailey in trouble, gets it to Ganey. Four on the shot clock, has got to go up. Don't know if it ever drew iron, it did not. Great defense by Duke. Young calling for it. Locates, spins, carves out some real estate. His real estate is below the rim, but it's just as valuable. Wilkowski mm -hmm. trying to duck in on the guard. Prognax, and Young's entry pass gets deflected out. Duke was picked preseason second in the conference. Behind North Carolina, who's playing right now against Charleston, the number one team in the nation. I like Virginia for that second spot. Tony Bennett has a terrific class coming in. He's got veterans back, Kihei Clark, Gardner. And he gives Tony Bennett veterans and talent. Yeah. They do a lot of good things. Jaden Gardner, all league last year, returns. I remember I saw him in media days. I said, dude, did you put on more weight? He was wearing a sweatshirt. I was, he's like, he just smiled at me. He's like, he didn't want to say, but he looked great, man. They, they, that is a veteran group, all five starters back. And Franklin, they need yeah. him from the outside. Come on, Franklin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Indiana. Yeah. Roach. Roach has got to the point where he misses when he's open, I'm surprised. When I was watching the practice a couple weeks ago, it was just, the game was so easy for him. It was impressive, and you saw it in that first game. You've seen it at times today, too. But so much size with by Duke. Oh, this uh -oh. is upstairs. We both saw that one coming. A little wraparound curl. Ryan Young as a decoy. And Mitchell upstairs. We were talking about Roach. And he's got size on his team that he's never had this kind of size. So he gets some open looks. Watch Mitchell just kind of wrap around Young, which is easy to do. You put it anywhere above the rim, and Mark Mitchell will get it. A fantastic athlete with an infectious personality on the court. Mitchell, the freshman from Kansas City, Kansas. Now played at Sunrise Christian. Good play design there. Got Ganey a good look, one of his few open looks. Now nobody guards the ball. Mm. Lepowski ripping and running, too. He can rip and I wouldn't want him running with it too much, but I'll tell you what, who can do that when he gets healthy? Derek Whitehead. He'll rip it, run, and finish it. He's got a little Jalen Brown in him, Derek Whitehead, in the Celtics. Okay. Brown came out of Cal, and many people, yours included, you truly, yours truly thought he wasn't going to be a great NBA player. He wasn't that skilled yet, but you saw the athleticism, the intelligence he has on and off the court, but his game has developed. He was a defender in high school, great driver yeah. and finisher, and an elite athlete. And Derek Whitehead is a big time athlete. See the pipes? Yeah, he's thick. He's got he's got he's thick, he's explosive, and he's smart. 6'7, 220. That's Whitehead, that's young. Inside again. Good ball fake. Gets the foul. Again, crafty. He takes up space. He knows how to make and maintain contact with his defender. Watch him make and maintain contact. Backs him in, shot fake, footwork, pursues the ball, another shot fake. Knows how to lift the defender. He knows he's not going to explode dunk over people, but he knows he can finish around guys. He went 11 for 12 from the free throw line. I'm sorry, 11 for 12 from the field in his first game against Jacksonville. Big rebound, strong move. Not and the only thing stopping Filipowski from scoring that was balance. When you get to this level, 
your physicality and your size doesn't always allow you to score the ball like it does in high school. So when you have balance and you play low, you can finish stronger, higher. And people, it's seven feet tall, your body's still got to fill out. You still got to get strong, especially in the lower, lower half, your legs, your glutes, to be able to maintain position, move guys. Gets the roll down. Tuesday night, men's basketball doubleheader for here at ACC Network on the ESPN app. Louisville hosts App State, 6 Eastern. Cards coming off that opening night loss against Bellarmine. Then Armando Baycat, the number one North Carolina Tar Heels, host Gardner Webb at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Speaking of that, Chapel Hill right now, Carolina down two in the first half with three minutes to go. They're down 41 39 to Charleston right now. One on the ACC Network extra. Interesting start there for the number one ranked team. Yeah, the expectations from last year to this year uh -oh. a little different. Yeah. Well, he was number seven <laughs> in the ESPN 100 if you keep in score. You know, he didn't make the McDonald's All-American game because the game didn't take 50 or players, but he was a McDonald's All-American. Kyle Filipowski is just so locked in on both ends. Denying at seven feet, pushing, finishing. Three-point shooter. McDonald's All-American and also he was the MVP at the McDonald's game and won a Geico championship for Montverde. He had an outstanding high school career. This is a uh, issue here. Jalen Ganey got a call for a flag of one. It looks like, I shouldn't say it's one, but Lee Cassell called it right away. As Ganey turned it over, he reached out his hand and just kind of grabbed at the foot of Jeremy Roach, potentially tripping him. Yeah. That's an easy one. And Roach, because he's feisty, he made a move towards Ganey. He's got to keep his composure. He's a leader of this team. Simply has to walk away. Cooler heads did prevail. He got out of there. And in the end, now the referees will take a look at this just to make sure they're properly adjudicating it. You, you don't think Ganey should be kicked out of the game and get a flag or two for that? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I mean, there's nowhere to go in Roach with a few bumps. And Ganey with the intentional foul. But not to hurt him, more to just stop the fast break. That's an F1. There you go. There's your definition of an excessive and or unnecessary. That hits both those, really. Not a legitimate play in the ball. There you go. Hold or push from behind. F2 is when you get in the world of uh, intent to hurt and things like that. Especially it's above delicious. the... Yeah, above the head. Above the neck. Yeah. And this turns into a lesson you know, for Jordan Ganey. When he gets frustrated down the road and other games are big south action, you know, he's got to let that go. See it one more time. He's frustrated. His team's down. He lost possession. And he wanted to stop the fast break and didn't make a wise choice. Mm -hmm. Roach to the line and short. Roach last year. He wrote his first free throws of the day, 0 for 2. I used to always, I mean, I shot those for us a lot, college and high school. It was always weird with nobody on the lane. I hated that. I'm not sure I ever went 0 for 2, but I didn't like it. It's a different level of pressure. It just feels weird. Anytime you take an athlete out of the routine or comfort, especially the free throw line, it is routine. You take that away, it gets a little weird. It's like when you went to the playground and there were no nets and you had to shoot the ball. It's weird. The, the rim is the same size, but there's no net. Proctor trying to turn the corner, get in the first pin. His first collegiate points. Good, strong finish. A good, aggressive take by Proctor. He needed that. I thought like they ran the play because they, want, they wanted him to get it. They wanted him to get that basket and get the monkey off his back. He was 0 for 8 in his first career game on Monday. Proctor just turns the corner. On Ganey, nice step through. Beautiful finger roll. Jaden Shoot just checked in the game for 
Jamie Roach, one of the other freshmen here from Yorkville, Illinois. Valentin White. What are we going to look at? What do we see from shoot? He can shoot it, and that's what he can do. But he's got to get adjusted to the speed of the game and getting open and knowing when to shoot the ball and when to move it. And Blake's so active on the ball. And there's another foul to stop a fast break by Rita. Duke has not allowed Upstate to score in the second half so far. That time, Blake's just, you know, he just goes for the ball. He's a good strip guy. He is. Good stale guy on the ball. Some guys are really good off the ball, anticipating others on the ball. I think Blake's does it really well. Mm -hmm. And Njai checks out. Smith checks in. And these are valuable minutes for Tyrese Proctor. Jalen Blake's beginning reps. Derek. Lively, back in, and shoot, buckets, on cue. He's a three ball waiting to happen. He's 0 for 3 on Monday from 3. Had yet to score his college career, knocks it down. But you got to transition to know your guy on the other side of the floor, too. Yeah, that will be on the film study tomorrow. But when you look at the shot preparation and shot mechanics of Jaden shoot, you can understand why he can fill it up. Grandison easily to the hole. And believe me, Duke needs Jaden shoot this year because they need someone who can make an outside shot off the catch and shoot that they can depend on, maybe at 37, 38%. Grandison, one of those guys as well, picks up his wide open, not only him. Short. And Proctor can be that guy as well. And shooting, as you know, is all confidence. Yeah, it is. If you have the mechanics and the preparation, and good shot quality. It all comes down to confidence. One of the shot clock, got to get it up. They do. Doesn't draw higher. And when your name is Jaden Shoot, you're expected to make shots. That was deep off the catch and shoot. And that's where he's best. The ability to spot up, knock it down. 40-point lead for the Blue Devils here. Quick shot from Bailey, no good. The way this game started, USC Upstate 7 to nothing in the first two or three minutes. Duke could not score. Duke turned over the first two possessions, led to easy layups for Spartans. Great start for them, but since then it's been 61 to 14. Now for John Shire, I just love the way they responded to the slow start. Can't get it to go. Lively can't get the rebound. Duke's defense, after the first five minutes in the first half to right now, has been outstanding. Another turnover. That's 16 now for Spartans. And it's not been one guy defensively, it's, it's been a collection of guys. It's been Roach. It's been Blakes. It's been Mitchell. And Filipowski and Jaden Young. I'm sorry, Ryan Young inside. You know, and Derek Lively, he just challenges shots. The ones that he doesn't block, he still challenges shots, and he makes it hard for guys to score. And as a guy, as a driver, you know he's there, too. It's in your head a little bit. Where's he at the floor? No question about it. Fouls now, five turnovers for the preseason All Big South first team reigning freshman of the year in that conference. We have some numbers that are impressive right now. Duke with 12 steals, 11 steals, excuse me. And those steals came, you know, after the first five or six minutes of the first half. But 12 assists, 23 field goals. Yeah. A little better than 50%. That's outstanding. It's a very good assist rate, and that was something John Shire talked about, too. Sharing the ball, great shots for two minutes. Oh, working and maintains possession. He's going to play hard no matter where he plays, no matter who he plays against. The question is, how long will he play this game? After college, well, he could be a guy who plays into his 40s. 
Well, in Europe, and have a good career with this skill set. He makes a three consistently. Too. And he, like I said, he'll be crushing people with the Y until he's 45. He's a mean screener. Good kick by Proctor. Shoot, can't get it to go. Here comes Bailey with two on one. You know, he hasn't done much in this game, Justin Bailey. Very good player for Upstate. 41-point lead for the Blue Devils. We come back, we'll take a look around the conference and the predictions for this 2022-23 campaign. Banners up there, the 2022 Final Four, last year's crew. But there's 11 new faces on the team this year. Jeremy Roach, the only guy from last year's squad and the new head coach. But they were picked in the preseason poll second behind North Carolina, who's currently number one in the nation. But Carolina's down seven at the break to College of Charleston. Gave them 50 in the first half. That said, do you agree with this poll in the top five? What are your thoughts overall about who you really like and some of these teams maybe not getting as much love right now? Well, I like Virginia too. I like Duke at three, possibly at four. Ooh. Miami has a strong backcourt. Nigel Pack, Isaiah Wong. They have a good team this year. Jim Laranega does so well with the experience. Duke has a lot of talent, and they have some terrific role players and blue guys right here. Mitchell. But when you go through the season, the battles of your conference on the road, the big question for Duke in my mind will be how do they respond to adversity during the season and how quickly can they develop consistency both offensively and defensively and john talked about it today at shoot around it's all about developing habits and playing with discipline they're always going to be prepared mm -hmm. but are they going to be disciplined they uh not really they haven't gone through much adversity yet. They were down 7 nothing in this game, and they've dominated ever since. Defense turned it up. But they're going to play Kansas on Tuesday as we take a look at this from Young. Look at those guys. 6'9", 6'10", 7-footer. You got a 7-1 on the bench. A lot of length there. And every game they play, they need to utilize their size, whether it's offensive rebounding, post-up game, shot blocking presence. They should own the glass in a lot of games that they play. Again, back to the, they will play Kansas, the reigning national champs, who was also obviously in the Final Four last year. Have a couple guys back from that team, Jalen Wilson, kind of have a new role as a wing player there. And they've got some great young players. Grady Dick is a, a huge uh, addition. So that team, they're playing Tuesday night, 9.30 ESPN. That will, that, we will really see something about what this team's about then. Yeah, Grady Dick is the best freshman shooter in the country. 6'7". Outstanding long-range shooter, also from the mid-range. Now, he played at Sunrise Christian with Mark Mitchell, so teammates are going to be opponents. Watch Duke. They're pressuring the ball. They're denying the ball. Nice back cut. When you overplay, you have a chance for steals, and offensively, you have to counter what the defense is going to do and take them a little bit higher, back cut to the basket. That could have happened a lot earlier in this game. Roach 0 for 2. Missed those two on the flagrant one earlier. 76% from the line last year. Gets this one. Well, now he's got guys in the lane. Told you. Feels different. Back to, back to your routine. Buckets. Forget we talked about this in the open that upstate lost three transfers, graduate transfers, guys that were all integral parts of their team last year. They have three injuries right now. And they're picked in the middle of the big south, and I think they'll be just at that middle spot, maybe a little higher, maybe four or five. They have a very athletic team in the big south at the one, two, and three. And Sydney Ninja, the transfer from West Virginia. He's got to give them some presence. It's not just the lost guys from last year. They are missing three would-be starters now yes. um, and on this team because of injuries. So they, they're playing depleted, and Dave Dickerson was real clear about that. We're, we're, we're hurt. We're banged up, and that's a, that's a problem, to say the least. And that's why it was so impressive to see them come out aggressive, <laughs> get a 7-0 lead. I mean, they believed that they could win this game at the beginning. Not anymore. A lot of that from Mark Pitcher. Filipowski's got back-to-back double-doubles, and we'll have a little official blows the whistle. Kellen Milliner. Brad 
Broadnax has an issue with equipment, so he goes off, and there's a lot of rotation here as Lively, Grandison, and Shoot come back in the game. And Duke's not going to take their foot off the pedal. Not at all. Part of developing habits. Yeah. You're up big, all right? You don't play the score, you play the game. And a lot of times, freshmen will look at the score, start changing their habits, and John Shire and his staff, they're making sure that his guys are playing the way they want them to play. Create the identity now. You only get so many times when the lights are on, the cameras are here, it's a real game. you got to maximize that time. And they, di they did the same thing against Jacksonville. You know, they, they played from start to finish the right way. Didn't always play pretty, but they played the right way. Deflected by Ganey out of bounds, 16 on the shot clock. We're just talking about overplay. Well, Proctor was overplayed that time. He's got a back cut. Mm -hmm. There's going to be games, and it could be Kansas next, yeah. where they're going to feel the heat and the pressure. And when you do, just back cut your man. The ball will find you when you're open. Champions Classic Tuesday night, 9.30 on ESPN. An appetizer for that one is Michigan State Ooh. in Kentucky. Michigan State right now is up on Gonzaga, number two in the nation, on an aircraft carrier out in San Diego right now. That's late second half, and they're up right now. Number one and number two. That got tipped, and the ball looked like it was in the cylinder, but it came out. Number one and number two in the country are down right now. A little different being down to Michigan State and being down to College of Charleston, which UNC is right now at the break. Down seven. A lot of people, even in our industry, overreact to scrimmages, early season games. There's a lot of time to shape your team, to work things out in practice. Duke and Carolina are great examples of that last year. Exactly. Yeah. Duke was, was building into their season, but hadn't had some of the wins they would have liked. And then they get going in the tournament. They didn't come back from being down all year. North Carolina similarly, they were one and seven against quad one teams as Filipowski gets it to go down. And then they win here at Cameron and Coach K senior night. And that changes their season. And they move forward and get to both of the Final Four. Well, I had a chance to call a North Carolina game last year. They just figured it out how to play R.J. Davis and Caleb Love with Baycott. So this was called for a flop. And there's no warning now. You get an automatic Class B technical, which means it's one shot and then back to the point of interruption. It is not, you know, shots in the ball. It also is not a personal foul. A new rule this year, which do you like that rule? I do, but it's so hard to call. It, it's very subjective. When a seven-footer at 230 pounds makes some contact with you, mm -hmm. you may go down. Not me. I don't know what you're talking about, Paul. <laughs> I'm good. I would go down before I got hit. <laughs> That's how we took charges. I, I, I like the fact that they're trying to clean up flopping, but it's, it's a really hard call to make. It is tough. I'm interested to see how that is called late game in big games if the refs actually do call it, because I want it to be out of the game as well. But you also don't want to call it that to determine it when it can be such a subjective thing. Also, it comes to, like, balance and where's your body position. It's like, I mean, it's hard to read sometimes. And how, do, how does the official know how much contact it takes to knock somebody over? Yeah. And they got a hard job. That we definitely know. That's a moving screen. Nice. But this young man, Ninja is going to really help the Big South this year. Transfer from WVU. He will be an impact player of the Big South. Not quite the same here with the Blue Devils. Duke cruising right now behind their leader, Jeremy Roach, 10.7 dimes, Paul. Not at all today. No, uh, he plays on both ends of the floor. You see the defense, which leads to easy two. Rejects the ball screen. Great take to avoid the charge as well. Plays with his head up. His eyes are wide open. That was a walk-up three for Jeremy Roach. And how about this kick out to Blakes for the three ball? Driving to his left, passing it across his body. You know, he came to Duke battle tested. Came from Paul the Sixth High School, played with Trevor Kills. Summer basketball with team takeover. He's a feisty, talented guard. And the only guy from that Final Four team last year. Their leader, the like sole captain, as Proctor loses it, regains it, kicks it out, an extra pass, shoot the ball, fade. Back to the free throw line, the Blue Devils go with a 13 for 18. USC Upstate has yet to visit the charity strike. We saw that graphic of players in the ACC. We know about Baycott, Love, and Davis. Isaiah Wong, 
he has continued to improve under Jim Laranega. Love his game. Terquavion Smith, outstanding shooter. Thought about the draft, came back. He'll be the go-to guy for Kevin Keats. Smith can really light it up. Tell you about the ACC Network football schedule. Fresh off their win over Syracuse. Pitt squares off against quarterback Brendan Armstrong and Virginia. UVA needs to win out just to be a full eligible Tony Ellett's first year. Noon Easter then, true freshman quarterback MJ Morris leads number 16 NC State against BC. And the day is capped off by our ACC and primetime matchup. Hughes tries to get the ship righted against number 23 Florida State, who've won two in a row, including just throttle for in state rival Miami last week. Buckets deep from Rebound. Simple pin down screen right up. And a little stagger. The more confidence this team can get early. And John Shire understands it's going to pay off during adversity. Mm -hmm. And when you got Kansas next, you need to feel good about yourself going into that game. Now, this team plays extremely hard, Duke. Trying to clear the bench a little bit. Derek Lively's first action as a Duke player. Debut for number one recruit is in the books. And he will walk off with a uh, four points, two rebounds in 15 minutes of play, and into the game comes Kale Catchings, the grad transfer from Harvard, gets a block right away, and Max Johns, the grad transfer from Princeton, kicks it over to Brandon Shoot. No good. Rebound by Catchings. Kicks it out to Johns. Christian Reeves, 21, also checked in, a freshman. Out of Charlotte, North Carolina, played at Oak Hill Academy. I know you're excited about his future. I love him, 21. In the white. A true seven-footer who can really block shots, run. Nice, soft hands. And he's developed really well over time. Rideau, a little bit of a park shot. Just picked it up off the bounce, turned and shot it. Buckets, 134. When Filipowski is gone, Lively is gone, and Young, you're going to see Christian Reeves right there with the ball, 21 and white. He'll start to step up for this team, you know, in his sophomore, junior year. Another seven-footer in this roster. Wow, they are big. A great evaluation by Duke. Chris Carroll is all over that one. And Reeves will get himself to the free throw line. First game, he had three points, one or two from the field. You mentioned Chris Carrowell, former great player here at Duke, and he had a great story for us. I said, what do you remember your first game? Because Lively's game was, first game was going to be tonight. We knew that. And you see him on the bench there to the right, talking to Emil Jefferson. Uh, he said, yeah, 1996, I was playing St. Joe's. And Bill Martelli, great coach. And, you know, I get in, one of the last guys in. I come in, turn the ball over, jog back. Next thing I know, horn, I'm out. And said that, called his mom afterwards. And, Wanted to talk to her, wanted her to, wanted her to console him. And she said, you must have done something wrong. This is just wrong. And right then I realized, I got to work it out. This is on me. He said, she's old school. And I think we all understand that. It's a little different world now. But he said, I got to figure this thing out. I got to get right. And eventually he did. And he's all ACC level player. And part of high level teams here, too. And he's a terrific basketball coach. Excellent recruiter. I think he's one of the better evaluators. He knows exactly what Coach K wanted. And now he knows what John Shire wants. And when you look at these Duke players, you look at the talent, and even looking ahead to next year's group, they're talented, but they're high-character kids. They're easy to coach. Guys you can trust off the court, and that's huge, especially when you're starting your coaching career. I think people underestimate that. Now, John Shire's been here for nine years. They have five number one recruiting classes, but all recruiting classes are not created the same. The type of player you're bringing into your program is huge. you got to have a guy that's going to come in be willing to be coached, to be taught, and do things all the right way on the court and off the court, especially an establishment like this. And you have to look at the traits. Body language. Are they competitive? Are they coachable? Five number one recruiting classes. And somebody told me that next year's class is pretty good, too. <laughs> but it's where are, they, are, they, are they currently ranked? Well, where do you have them now? Number one. Number one. Is that potentially being threatened, or is, is there enough guys out there to change that equation? There's, there's a couple of guys on the board that could change that equation. And there's a school called Kentucky that is yeah. always fighting it out with Duke for that number one and number two spot. 
Spencer Hubbard was eager to, to get in the game, the junior from Los Angeles. It's coming in for the shooter. You got to go. went nuts. Yeah, yeah. To go back to the bench. A lot of guys forget to go to the table first. They just go into the game. Crowd favorite. Loves him. 5'8", buck 60. And a Harvard Westlake, which produces a ton of great players at high academic institutions. That's where the ball Hubbard is on the pass. The officials do not have a flight to get to, it's evident. Neither do I, but I'm starving. Hot up here in the gantry, too. I feel like I worked out the second time today. I lost weight up here today. <laughs> With the sun lamps, the <laughs> lights. We got a real tough gig, folks, we know. We're digging ditches out here. Bailey, buckets. Oh, good for him. 3A Player of the Year in South Carolina last year. Won a state championship for Blue Ridge High School. He's going to be a really good one for Dave Dickerson. A real good one. Shoots a nice ball. Just overmatched tonight. Tom Shada handling the rock. The redshirt junior from Australia. 22. Gets it back to Bailey. Kick cross. Shot short. Ninja. shoot around today for Duke and Mill Jefferson he did a really good job scouting USC Upstate covered all their baseline out of bounds plays you see him talking to Chris Carroll how hard is that when you when we always saw the 18 inches you slide over from an associate or assistant head coach to a head coach but when you move up in the pecking order it's now you are doing scouting reports and you're having more responsibility what is that like? a lot of pressure yeah. pressure to deliver a good report to the team make sure that not that you understand it, but they understand it. In short sound bites, you know, you want to you want to coach this game and phrases and sound bites. You can teach in practice. Will Jefferson, I was really impressed with him, and he knows he has to continue to polish up as a recruiter, mm -hmm. and that's part of the gig. Yeah. We got to continue this pipeline of talent, high character players. The scout is so important too, and this is. Side note, not everybody is, is, is a good evaluator or scouter. And sometimes it's about doing the homework and just knowing everybody on the roster. I tell this, to you, tell this to you because we had a coach that clearly was not cut for the business. Left the guy off the court. The kid starts, has 15 in the first half. Let's just say in the halftime, I don't think we were spoken to. I think the coach just got reamed out. <laughs> Who the heck is number five? Hubbard. No good. That guy might be selling. Real estate right now. Oh, he is. He's not in basketball. Yeah, he is. Can't not be. Coach. You leave someone off the report that hurts you. It did not go well. It's not good for your career. But a lot of coaches get wordy on the scouting report, and sometimes you can put the players to sleep. Mm -hmm. Mill Jefferson kept it short and sweet. And Jai threw some contact. No call. You know, you want your players to play, play hard, play with intensity. You don't want them overthinking. Catchings in the corner. Hubbard forces a turnover. Jones gets to the catchings. That might be the connection we mentioned. Okay, Johns and Hubbard need to score. The only two who have not scored. There you go. I was like, they need to score? They're up by 40. No, they need to get their name in the Three? book. Yep. Look, that was a walk-on. Give me the ball. Great hustle. Oh, great hustle. Yeah, on the deck. It's a seven-footer down on the deck. Catching space for three this time. Great drive and finish by Catchings. A nephew of Tamika Catchings, one of the greatest women's players of all time. Straight up, bodies up, well done. See, when you're a walk-on, 
your game is in practice, so you never get minutes like this. Usually you get 30, 40 seconds. You get a couple of minutes. You gotta call your own number. You get your shots up, baby. You gotta get them up. Crowd wants you to get them up. Coach still does want you to play the right way. No question about it. And they're trying to run the offense, they're running their horn sets, looking for each other. It, it, they try to play the right way, and that's what makes them special. Five on the clock, Hubbard's gotta go. Loses it and out of bounds. And that'll take us to a TV timeout. Duke in firm control as they coast to 2-0 in the John Shire era. A minute 51 to play. And he's been playing basketball since he's been six years old. As we know, it runs deep in his family. He was an honor roll student for all four years of high school. I'll give you a nugget on him. Played the French horn. Fifth grade through ninth grade. I wonder if he can give it to him now. Can he still can he still dabble? Probably. He's probably bigger than the French horn, too. <laughs> at that age. Talented, smart. Stanley Borden checking in. The crowd liking that as well. The sophomore from Turkey. Walk on. Trying to tell you about the Sunday Best this week. Features a volleyball matchup between Syracuse and Boston College from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Coverage begins at noon Eastern. Right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Next up for USC Upstate, they keep it in the ACC. They go on the road at Clemson. They're going to fall to 2 and 12 all time against the ACC. They beat Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech in their history. Gordon bodying up. Take a look at Ninjai, 45. He's a big dude. Yes. 6'9 plus. He's chiseled. He went 8 for 10 in his first game from the free throw line. That'll be a big help for Upstate this year. Chambers Jr. Fade away. Shot clock violation. Now they controlled the floor. Here we go. Shoot. Taken to the rim and foul. I've been in these games before when you get that big blowout lead, you get the starters out, you start thinking about your next game. You're on to KU right now? In, in John's mind, I think he's thinking about Kansas now. He may never say it, but sitting on the bench with this type of lead in the last five minutes, you're starting to think about your matchups. You're starting to think who played well tonight. Kansas played last night. They, they won in dominating fashion for the second game to start their season. I mean, they just guard you so hard Kansas and I think if anything that Duke has to work on is their offense and getting open cutting screening and getting opportunities because they don't want to play against live ball turnovers with Kansas yeah, so the defensive pressure will be the toughest that they've seen obviously so far this season I, I think Duke will play with great energy I think they'll guard really well they have the size inside but can they score points and execute That's 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. The doubleheader of the Champions Classic. First game is Kentucky, Michigan State. That Kansas team the defending national champs. Jalen Williams, different role now, is kind of one of their B guys, was on the team last year in a critical spot, though, too. Juan Harris, Kevin McCullough transfers over to Texas Tech. I mean, they got some dudes, man. That'll be a great night of basketball. Keep an eye. Kicks off our season. Yeah, keep an eye on Grady Dick, an outstanding shooter, best freshman shooter in the country. Kentucky has two studs. Casey Wallace, Chris Livingston. Two tremendous freshmen. And Hubbard will just hold it, and that'll do it. A dominating win for the Blue Devils in their second outing. Things will change Tuesday night. Maybe not the outcome, but the competition for sure. Well, there's .2 on the clock. So you're going to wait a second, and then it'll be inbound at an end. Final score, 84-38 here for Paul B. and Cardi, our great producer, Will Black, director, Caleb Waters. I'm Dallin Cuff. We're done here. We're sending you to Doug Sherman and Corey Alexander on the call. Georgia at Wake Forest. We out.